Star Wars The Force Wilder Season 2 Chapter 1 A dark past is a dark path to the dark side. I have been whipped, beaten, had bones broken before I could walk or talk. My upbringing was harsh, cruel, and brutal. The slaver's punishing treatment turned me into something sadistic, rash, and volatile. It's no excuse, I know, but I can't help the way I feel. Raxus once said to me, My pain doesn't have to define who I am. And I pray to the creator of all life that Raxus is right. But deep down inside, I can sense it. I can feel it. And I know he isn't. Maybe that's what Rencor intended this entire time to turn me into a depraved killer. Well, he succeeded at it most efficiently. Because every move I seem to take is a calculated step to embrace death. I now travel to the planet Krom, my indigenous homeworld, where I will meet up with Rencor and face him in force-to-force -force combat, where we will battle to the death, for between the two of us, there can be only one. I was born with nothing, and I'll die with nothing. Moaz Divas says, Excuse me, sir, but may I make a small observation, if I may be so bold, sir? A voice coming from the comm system speaks out. Who the hell are you? Moaz Divas asks. I am the IMC, the Infiltrator's mainframe computer system, sir. Automatically activated when the emergency escape pod has been jettisoned. My systems are designed to help the escape pod occupants survive any harsh environments until a rescue can be achieved, sir. Your survival is my main objective. You may call me IMC. The IMC says, An acronym for a name? I see. Well, how can you help me? Ask Moaz Divis. Your personal assessment of your current situation is incorrect, sir. My databanks contain personal information and financial records from over 6 million star systems, including your homeworld of the planet Krom. Planetary law dictates upon the death of the property owner, he or she must vocally deem a successor to all financial assets, says the IMC. I don't understand. How can any of that help me? Ask. Moaz Divis. Your assessment about being born with nothing and dying with nothing is incorrect, sir. The IMC says. I'm still not following you. What are you talking about? Ask Moaz Divis. Your uncle, sir. He owns the planet Krom, your homeworld. Inherited from your father. Upon your father's death, in accordance with planetary law, your uncle was awarded all your father's accumulated wealth, including the deed to your home world of Krom, says the IMC. My family was wealthy? Asked Moaz Divas. Extremely, sir. Your father owned several planets, accumulating a vast wealth over his illustrious career, says the IMC. Hmm. I think I understand now. Rencor didn't just kill my father for the bounty. He knew he would inherit my father's fortune as well. Moaz Divas says. Yes, sir. 
I calculate a 99% probability that your uncle betrayed your father for the purpose of acquiring his vast wealth, the IMC says. Stop calling him my uncle. He means nothing to me. Moez Divas yells. Sorry, sir, the IMC says. How does this information help me? Moaz Divas ask. If you defeat Rincor in battle, sir, and make him vocally concede, acknowledging you as his successor, then upon his death, all his accumulated wealth will be passed on to you, being his blood relative, says the IMC. Oh, is that all I have to do? Defeat him in battle? That's just great. There are five of them and just one of me, you know. And Rencor is exceedingly powerful in the force. I seriously doubt I can defeat them all in combat. But even if it means my death, I must still try to defeat them, says Moaz Divas. My records indicate your father was a great warrior. He wielded a weapon more powerful than any before it. Maybe with your father's weapon as your ally, it could help even the odds in battle, the IMC says. Weapon? What weapon? Ask Moaz Divas. The glaive, sir, the IMC says. A glaive? What is a glaive? Moaz Divas ask. A glaive? A pole arm consisting of a single-edged laser blade at the end of an extended pole. Deep in the catacombs on your family's land, sir, he used the glaze power to conquer many worlds during the Great Expansion War. The weapon was buried alongside your father, kept inside his tomb, deep beneath the catacombs of the planet Crown. The IMC says, Hmm. Wouldn't Rencor have kept such a powerful weapon for himself? Ask Moaz Divas. Doubtful, sir. Rencor would still possess your father's weapon, because in accordance with your family's creed, a warrior's weapon must be buried with him, so one can defend themselves in the afterlife. The symbolism goes further than family, law, or tradition. It's more like faith or belief in an eternal life. It's part of your family's religion. The IMC says... Hmm. Sounds very interesting. There's a good chance my father's weapon could be buried alongside him? At his final resting place? Do you have the location of my father's burial site? In your records? Asked Moaz Divas. Yes, sir. Your family's ancestral burial location is stored in my database. I'm linking voice command and all pertinent information to your mobile comm system you have attached to your wristband, sir. You can now retrieve information, gain access, and give vocal commands from your wristband communication device. Awaiting your command now, sir. The IMC says. Good. Because I intend on taking you and your vast knowledge of historical events along with me in those catacombs beneath Krom. Maybe with your help and my father's weapon, I'll stand a fighting chance against Rencor and his followers. Moez Divas says, Understood, sir. My programming dictates I hope you survive in any way possible, sir. I'll do my best to assist you. The IMC says, You already have. You've given me a chance. And that's all anyone can ask for. Now, prep the escape pod for a soft landing. Moaz Divas says. Prepping the ship now, sir, says the IMC. As the emergency escape pod arrives at the planet Krom, Moaz Divas scans the surface of the planet until locating his family's ancestral burial site deep beneath the deadly catacombs of the planet Krom. The IMC lands the emergency escape pod near an old burnt-down castle, long abandoned many years ago. The decrepit 
old falling apart castle bearing the moniker the House of Moesk. The name engraved on the family's crest hanging above the entrance gate, nearly falling down from old age and neglect. Moesk Devis leaves the escape pod, walks past the massive giant front gate as he enters the dark and creepy old ancient structure. He feels a familiar presence, an old feeling from the past, familiar yet unrecognizable, but the feeling is distinctive to his bloodline. His facial expression held in bewilderment as he walks around looking at the castle. Wow, it's hard to believe this place was once my home. But it feels more like a tomb now. There's nothing for me here anymore. Moaz Divas says. As he enters the grand gallery, filled with statues of unfamiliar faces, with one name and face appearing over and over again, on multiple statues and in multiple places. The name, Viralis Moask. Whoever he was, he must have been a very great man. His statues are literally spread throughout this entire castle. Ask Moaz Divas. The IMC responds. Yes, sir. He was indeed a very great man. Viralis Moask was your father, sir. The IMC says. My father. Fascinating. And the others? Moaz Divas asks. The statues were of your mother, brother, and sister, your father's grandfathers as well, the other noble members of your family. Going back for generations, sir, the IMC says. Are they all dead now? asked Moaz Divas. Yes, sir. They were all hunted down by Clan Divas and exterminated. My official records show that none survived. Only you and Rencor are the sole heir to your father's kingdom. The IMC says. Kingdom? What kingdom? Look around this place. It's a tomb. I see no kingdom. Just a life I could have had. But it was taken from me. I see only a graveyard of lost hopes and dreams. Where's my father's final resting place located? Ask Moaz Divas. Beneath the castle deep below in the catacombs of Krom. But I must warn you of a very grave danger, sir. The entire lower levels are ruled by man-eating creatures known only as the Vipok. Not indigenous to your world. An invasive species from another world. The off-worlders ruin the environment, which destroyed the economy, wreaking havoc on all life on the surface of the planet. An invasive species that grows fast and reproduces quickly. They spread aggressively and destroyed your entire world. An intrusive species brought here from another planet. A planet from in the dark patches of the outer rim. The IMC says. This just gets better all the time. And explains why the planet is virtually uninhabited. Says Moaz Devis. Correct sir. This planet was abandoned due to the arrival of the Vitoc creatures. Virtually unstoppable, they fed on the population until the people had no choice but to abandon their homeworld in search of another, the IMC says. I see. I guess Rencor figures if he doesn't kill me, then the Vitoc creatures will. Hmm. Tell me everything you know about these creatures, the Vitox, Moaz Devis asks. Officially, the Vita creatures do not exist in my databanks, which is in itself very suspicious, sir. I have only personal recorded accounts from victims who survived the initial attack, but succumbed to death from the poisoning of the creature's bite. They are no known survivors that has faced these creatures and live to tell, sir. The IMC says. Sounds like some type of biological weapon to me. 
So you don't have any information on the VTOC creatures that can help aid me? Asked Moaz Davis. Not much, sir. Just rumors and vague descriptions from terrified victims. They feed on the living and bury themselves deep underground, presumably to keep warm. That's the only intel I can provide, the IMC says. That's it? That's all the intel you have on them? Moaz Davis asked. Details about these creatures are extremely limited, sir, the IMC says. Understood. Well, whether they're down there or not, I need that weapon. My father's glaive may be the only chance I have against Rencor and his men. I have to find it, and I can't let some mysterious creature stand in my way. I'm going down there. Pull up an interior scan of this castle and find me a quiet way into those catacombs below, Moaz Davis says. Yes, sir. Scanning now. Searching. Locating. Locating. I found something, sir. Right outside the main courtyard, there's a staircase leading down to the lower levels of the catacombs, sir. Leading straight to your father's tomb, the IMC says. Understood, Moaz Davis says. As Moaz Davis makes his way to the main courtyard, he takes notice of his family's paintings alongside the walls. Seeing for the first time pictures of his mother and father standing proudly next to his brother and sister. Moaz Davis places his hand on the painting, seeming to be reflecting on what might have been if his family had lived and he had grown up in a happy and safe home surrounded by people who loved him. The loss he suddenly feels echoes inside his empty soul. As his anger starts to grow, the outrage of being denied a normal life enrages Moaz Davis to no end. Burying his anger deep, as he removes his hand from the painting, he refocuses his attention on the task of finding his father's weapon. Searching until finding the staircase in the courtyard leading down to the lower levels of the catacombs below, along a narrow stairwell leading deep beneath the castle. The deeper he goes, the darker it gets. Moaz Davis' eyesight is adaptable to any spectrum of light, a genetic trait unique to his species. The decrepit staircase is crumbling down and falling apart as he walks down the stairs to the lower levels, searching the bottom of the rotting structure barely standing and almost falling down. He follows a long trail that leads into the burial vault, and inside there he finds the four coffins of his long-lost family, laying at rest. They are all there, his mother, his father, his brother, and sister, their casket neatly aligned in this beautiful elaborated painted tomb. Someone took great care in placing them in this beautiful decorated mausoleum. Paintings of ancestral relatives cover the walls, obviously a display of great respect for a proud and noble family. The house of Moaz stood for generations until now. All their accomplishments, vast wealth, and great deeds, now only memories faded into dust. Moaz Davis makes his way over to his father's sarcophagus and uses the power of the force to remove the lid from his father's coffin. Finding the remains of his father's body perfectly preserved, as if he just died yesterday, he takes a moment and stares at his father's face as if he's burning the image deep into his subconscious. He begins looking for his father's weapon but cannot find the glaive anywhere, frantically searching every inch of his father's coffin, but finding nothing. Where is it? I cannot find the weapon. I've thoroughly searched, and it's not here. Impossible. Where could it be? Unless Rencor is more depraved than I thought. He must have kept my father's weapon for himself instead of following our family's tradition of bearing a warrior's weapon with him. 
Rencor has committed heresy against the house of Moask. He is indeed a vile and evil man. He has stolen everything from me, my family, my future, even my father's weapon. He's left me with nothing, and I will make him pay with his life for what he has done to me, Moaz Devis angrily says. Sir, I'm detecting movement. Micro changes in air density suggest there are six creatures approaching from the northeast corner of this position, the IMC says. I know. I can sense their presence. I feel their life force approaching. Let them come to me, Moaz Devis says. If I may inquire, sir, how is it possible to sense another being's life force? The IMC asks. The force. The force makes it possible. I can't explain it in words, but ever since I've gotten to this planet, my powers have tripled, rapidly growing in strength, intensifying my connection to the force, increasing my powers. I cannot explain it. I thought it might be my connection to this planet, but I am not sure anymore, Moaz Davis says. Perhaps it's because of your birthday, sir. The IMC says. My birthday? Moez Davis asks. Yes, sir. I extrapolated from the time of your abduction as a child, extended the time frame you served as a slave until right now at this very moment in time. And if my calculations are correct, today is your 19th birthday, sir. The dated age when your species reaches its full maturity, the IMC says. That must be why my powers have tripled. I've gotten a year older, and why Rencor wanted to fight me before I became any more powerful, Moaz Devis says. As the VTOC creatures key in on Moaz Devis' biosignature, they enter his family's tomb, very hungry, searching for something to eat. The eight-foot-tall, dark-green, lizard-like creatures encounter Moaz Devis kneeling beside his father's coffin, staring at his family's mural on the wall, locked into a trance, in deep meditation, absorbing energy from the dark side of the force. The intoxicating scent of Moaz Devis's pheromones excite the creatures as their glowing red eyes illuminate the ambient darkness inside the ancient tomb. When the powerful, fast-moving Vitoc creatures suddenly leap in towards Moaz Devis, with their jaws spread wide open, revealing six-inch snarling poisonous fangs, ready to sink their teeth into his flesh. Moaz Devis ignites the Slayer laser sword, illuminating the pitch-black darkness of the catacombs in a dark red crimson hue. Strikes as sparks fly from his laser sword, cutting into the creature's flesh slicing completely through the VTOC creature's bodies, eviscerating, decapitating, and amputating each of their limbs, leaving a pile of disfigured, squirming body parts on the floor of the tomb. When a great cry is heard screaming from the depth of the deadly catacombs, a sickening, belly-aching cry coming from the depth of the planet's core, a heart-wrenching scream coming from the queen of the Vitox, sensing her offspring's death at the hands of Moaz Divas. Sir, I'm detecting massive movement coming in this direction, the IMC says. How many of them are they? Moaz Divas asks. Difficult to tell, sir. Because of the creature's speed, it's hard to get an accurate account on their numbers. But if my readings are correct, they are numbering in the thousands, sir. The IMC says. Calculate a battle assessment for me. Include the perimeters if I was to engage the approaching horde in head-to-head -head combat, attempting to kill them all. Ask Moaz Devis. Calculating. One moment, sir. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. The results are coming in now, sir. My projections indicate your chances for survival are not good, sir. I've ran the simulation several times, and the results are always the same. 
the IMC says, which are, Moaz Devis asks, My projections predict a 97% probability that you will be overwhelmed and destroyed by the VTOC creature, sir. The IMC says, Overwhelmed. Moaz Devis asks, Yes, sir. The creature's attack patterns indicate they will first attack in waves to distract you. At the same time, a vast number of their resources will burrow up beneath your feet, while a second group, numbering in the hundreds, will burrow down from above you and attack you from above and below at the same time. A simultaneously coordinated attack that will completely surround and overwhelm your position, sir. The IMC says, Hmm. Understood. And also undeniable proof of a higher intelligence. If I'm to defeat the VTOC creatures, I must bring the fight to them, but not down here in these catacombs. I must force them to the surface and face them on a different terrain than this one, one that gives me the tactical advantage to defeat them. I must bottleneck the entire horde. That will give me the edge I need to destroy them all. But for now, I must retreat, regroup, and reassess the battle situation. Scan these catacombs and find me a quick way to the surface, says Moaz Devis. Copy, sir. Scanning the interior walls of the catacombs now, sir. Stand by. Stand by. Scanning. Stand by. Stand by. I've located something, sir. Six meters down that cavern on your right-handed side, sir. I'm detecting a geothermal vent that leads to the surface of the planet. That would be the fastest way to the surface, sir, the IMC says. Are you serious? You want me to ride a metal-melting geothermal geyser to the surface of the planet? I thought your mandate was to ensure my survival. Not to take chances with my life on impossible task, Moaz Devis says. It's the only option I'm detecting for a speedy retreat to the surface, sir. And it's not impossible. I calculate a 89% probability that you will not melt before you reach the surface of the planet, sir. The IMC says. Wow. An 89% probability that I won't burn up. Oh, that's just great, Moaz Devis says. It's the only option I'm detecting for immediate escape, sir, the IMC says. I was joking with you, IMC. What, Yayo Boy didn't program you with a sense of humor? Moaz Devis asked. No, sir. Only protocol and survival tactics are inserted into my memory banks, the IMC says. Hmm. Well, we'll have to work on that, Moaz Devis jokingly says. Note it for future reference, sir. The IMC says. The geothermal vent would do just fine as an escape route, but I do have to find some way of shielding my feet from the intense heat as I ride it to the surface of the planet. Moaz Devis says. Just then, the first wave of VTOC creatures enter the cavern, running to attack Moaz Devis as he ignites the Slayer's laser sword. He strikes the closest creature to him, decapitating its head off. Moaz Devis then uses the power of the Force to levitate the creature's dead body onto the top of the geothermal vent opening. As the horde of Vita creatures surround Moaz Devis, gathering to eat him, the rumbling sound of the next geyser's eruption can be clearly heard coming from the bowels of the catacombs. As Moaz Devis jumps atop the dead body of the Vita creature, using its dead body to shield his feet from the geyser's intense heat as he rides the exploding geyser to the surface of the planet, escaping the swarm of attacking Vita creatures. The volatile ride to the surface of the planet incinerates the Vita creature's dead body to complete ashes, but works as a shield to protect Moaz Devis's feet from the intense geothermal heat as he rides it to the surface of the planet. As Moaz Devis bursts through the geyser's open vent, he's thrown high into the air before he safely splashes down into a deep hot spring of warm water. Splashing around for a moment, 
until he stands up and looks around to see if he's been followed to the surface by the deadly creatures. Alone and safe on the surface of the planet, Moaz Devis takes off running in the direction he feels the force guiding him. Following a long wayward path through an endless dark forest, leading him to a distinct destination. Running until finding the damaged Explorers 10 starship, seemingly abandoned by the crew with no one else in sight. Moaz Devis looks around the spacecraft, searching for clues to the crew's whereabouts, taking notice of the circular hole he cut into the hull of the Explorers 10 starship when he first encountered the craft on the planet Vija. The starship, still smoking from his attack, when he killed one of Rencar's crewmen and destroyed the control panel, nearly destroying the ship. The Explorer's 10 starship looks like it's ready to fall apart from a very rough landing, caused by the malfunctioning landing gear. Not finding anything of interest in or near the starship, Moaz Devis moves on from the damaged vessel. Searching for his murderous uncle, Rencor, and the four remaining members of his crew. Searching a wooded area northeast of the starship until sensing the life force of the two crew members nearby. Both of the men appear to be repairing the control panel Moaz Devis destroyed on the planet Vija. Sensing the dark side emanating from the two men, he realizes Rencor has set the two crewmen out as bait for a trap. Angered by Rencor's deception, Moaz Devis channels energy from the dark side of the force, increasing his speed, strength, and power, ignites his slayer laser sword, and attacks the two men with a fierce melee, splicing the men in half, killing them both, with a blatant surprise attack in an attempt to draw his murderous uncle out from hiding. An echoing voice speaks out from the darkness of the canyon floor. Moaz Devis' aggressive strategy has worked. I can sense everything through the Force. Your feelings, your fears, your failures, your strengths and weaknesses. I can sense every minute detail about you, boy. I can peer deep into your soul. And even though your powers have grown stronger, you are still not a threat, boy, Rincar says. My name is Moaz Devis, and that weapon you carry belonged to my father. Therefore, it belongs to me. And after I kill you, I'll pry it from your dead hands and use its power to cut off your wicked head from your ratchet body. After, of course, you have declared me the rightful heir to the house of Moask. Moaz Devis yells at Rencor. <laughs> I see you have been learning about our family's past. Good. I think it's about time you knew about our family's proud history. That way, when I destroy you, you will fully understand why I'm doing it. To preserve our family's honor, our coat of arms, only the strongest shall rule, Rincor says. You heretic, how dare you speak to me of family honor. I know what you did and why you did it. Rincor, you are nothing to me but another dead relative. And the moment I take your life will be the first moment of my freedom, free from your malice, Moaz Devis says. Rencor, angered to action by Moaz Devis' words, jumps out from hiding, jumps out from the darkness, with the glaive in hand ignited. As Moaz Devis senses the attack, he ignites his Slayer laser sword. As the two energy beams clash, sparks fly. The two engage in brutal combat, exchanging striking blows. A grueling battle ensues as laser blades clash between them in a crackling frenzy. They press against each other's strength, but neither of them gives. 
the two combatants stare into each other's eyes. Rencor impatiently thrusts forward to strike, but he is caught off balance as Moaz Devis force pushes him to the ground. As Rencor tries to get up, Moaz Devis punches him in the face, knocking out several of his teeth. Rencor, stunned, shocked by his nephew's raw power of strength, connecting him to the force. Sensing a cosmic force feeding off negative emotions, increasing his nephew's strength of force powers. As Rencor tries to use the force himself, Moaz Devis senses it and stumps on his uncle's ankle, breaking his foot in half. As Rencor screams out in pain, Moaz Devis is disgusted by his cowardice display of whimpering cries coming from his murderous uncle, compounded with the emotional pent-up hatred towards Rencor, he explodes in anger. Moaz Devious goes insane with hatred and begins a vicious attack upon Rencor, violently grabbing his uncle's arm and twisting it backwards until breaking his shoulder blade, all the while screaming a raging tirade at his uncle, angrily tapping into the dark side of the force, becoming more and more powerful repeatedly punching Rencor over and over again, snapping his uncle's left hand backwards, breaking his wrist, continually beating him while telling him to say it, to say the words, standing over his uncle yelling at him, commanding him to say the words as he beats him repeatedly over and over again. Moaz Devis defeats his uncle in combat standing over his broken body yelling at him over and over again to say the words that will make Moaz Devis his successor. Say the words, old man, and I promise you, I'll make your death quick, Moaz Devis yells. Never! I shall never submit to the likes of you, boy! Rincar yells back at Moaz Devis. Anger to no end, Moaz Devis starts brutally beating his uncle again, force punching him so hard, breaking his ribs, stomping on his right ankle, snapping the bone in half. As Rencor cries out in pain, unable to defend himself any longer, Moaz Devis mercilessly twists Rencor's wrist until breaking his arm, then begins repeatedly punching him in the face until breaking his uncle's jaw. Rencor Physically devastated, shocked, and overwhelmed, has been beaten, broken, and utterly defeated in combat. His connection to the Force has been severed, as Moaz Devis breaks nearly every bone in his body. Now powerless and defeated at the hands of his nephew, Rencor, for the first time, feels fear. With every brutal blow, Rencor feels his life slipping away as he crawls to his knees in submission. With Moaz Devis standing over him yelling, Say it. Say the words, old man, or I swear I'll bury you in an unmarked grave, and your soul will never reach the afterlife. Your soul will linger in limbo for all eternity, forgotten and lost forever. Moaz Devis says, All right, I'll say it. As you wish, Rencor says. Kneeling on his knees in subjugation, bleeding from his mouth, nose, and ears, broken and defeated, Rencor takes a deep breath of air and screams out loud with his last breath of air. All hell! Moaz Devas Moaz Devas Moaz Devas Moaz Rincor says And promptly afterwards Moaz Devas decapitates Rincor's head off killing him dead As Rincor's head rolls around on the ground his last two crewmen are just returning from gathering repair parts for their damaged starship the Explorer 10 they see Moaz Devis standing over the dead body of their captain, holding his severed head in his hand, showing them proof Rencor is indeed dead. 
it's over for you both. Before he died, Rencor declared me his heir. Now I own everything he did. His credits, his starships, and the planets. They are all now mine, legally and hereditarily. You two now serve me. Now, bow before me and show your allegiance or challenge me in combat, says Moaz Devis. Both of the men look at each other in shock, then stare back at Moaz Devis, holding the decapitated head of Rencor in his hand. Staring at them, his eyes aglow, wreathed in flame. They both can sense his strength of power in the force and know they cannot defeat him in combat. They both decide to submit to his power. They both subligatingly kneel and bow their heads to Moaz Devis as a sign of subjugation. Holding the severed head of their captain in his hand, he looks at the dismembered head of his uncle. The look of horror frozen on his face in the last moments of living, staring into its eyes and says, These are the weak fools you had following you? Pathetic, says Moaz Devis. Moaz Devis ignites his father's glaive and launches it at the two bowing crewmen, cutting both of their heads off with one bold stroke. As their heads fall onto the ground rolling around, the glaive flies through the air until returning to Moaz Devis' hand. As he deactivates and sheathes his father's glaive, he reactivates his wristcom and begins speaking to the IMC. IMC, are you there? Ask Moaz Devis. Yes, sir, I am, the IMC says. Can you access the Explorer 10's control systems? Ask Moaz Devis. Yes, sir, you are now the legal owner of the Scotia. With your permission, I can deactivate all previous security protocols and gain full control of the Starship, sir, the IMC says. Good. My permission is given. Once you have full control of the Starship systems, run a full diagnostic on all operating systems. I want to know just how badly damaged is the vessel, says Moaz Devis. Connecting, sir. One moment, please. Accessing. 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 Link upload complete. I'm connected, sir. Checking the ship systems. Scanning. Scanning. Running a full diagnostic, sir. This may take several moments. Cross-referencing. Repair diagnostic now. The report is coming in, sir. The ship is severely damaged. More than half of the ship operating systems are offline, in need of major repair, sir. The IMC says. Hmm. What about the hyperdrive? Will it jump to light speed? Ask Moaz Devis. Barely, sir. You won't even have enough power to land. In fact, the ship is so severely damaged, I calculate a 99% probability the vessel will break apart upon entering another planet's atmosphere. The ship must be repaired before any departure will be successful. The IMC says, No, I don't have time to make repairs. Prep the ship for immediate takeoff. I only need a few moments to complete my task. Afterwards, we're leaving this planet. For good. I only need the Explorer 10 to get me to one destination. After that, it can burn up in the Veltarium Maelstrom for all I care. Says Moaz Devis. May I inquire about your mission, sir? The IMC asks. Sure. I'm going to assassinate the Vita Queen, bringing her rule to an end on this world. My world, says Moaz Devis. Queen? Sir, how do you know there's a queen? Ask the IMC. I sensed her presence, 
deep beneath the catacombs when the creatures attacked me before? And I'm going back down there to end this, to end the Vitox rule on this planet once and for all, because the queen is the key to their survival. I'll take the same venting geyser I used to escape and use it to find the queen's lair. Without their queen to feed and lead them, the others will die soon and wither away, says Moaz Devis. Running through the darkness of night until reaching the geyser's venting shaft, Moaz Devis leaps down into the geyser's vent, free-falling hundreds of kilometers until reaching the very bottom of the catacombs, using the power of the force to decelerate his free-falling speed. As Moaz Devis lands safely on the cavern's floor, he uses stealth to avoid being detected by several of the queen's guards patrolling the lower levels of the catacombs. Using the power of the force to sense the queen's presence, he follows a long tunnel that opens up to a large cavern, nesting a massive Vita queen, surrounded by workers and guards protecting the queen. Once the Vita creatures notice Moaz Divis' presence approaching their queen, they go into a frenzy trying to protect her. As the creatures swarm around Moaz Divis, he ignites both the Slayer laser sword and his father's glaive. Drawing energy from the dark side of the force, he increases his power, strength, speed, and endurance. Moaz Divis attacks the Vita creatures, killing indiscriminately and dismembering creature after creature. As the queen senses the danger, she tries to escape. Moaz Divis reaches out with the power of the force and chokes the queen of the Vita creatures, crushing her throat, suffocating her to death. As their queen falls down to the ground dead, the Vita creatures will to fight fades away as they turn from Moaz Divis and run to aid their fallen queen, frantically trying to revive her dead body. Not understanding what has just happened to their queen, the remaining Vita creatures go into a panic. As a great cry of sorrow can be heard coming from the horde of the Vitox, as the swarm of creatures are distracted by their queen's death, Moaz Divis quietly slips away during the chaos and confusion of the moment and escapes fleeing to the geothermal vent. Some of the creatures follow in pursuit. Moaz Divis uses the power of the force to crush a Vita creature to its death, then throws his dead corpse over the ventilating shaft, using its dead body to shield his feet from the sweltering geyser's heat as he rides to the surface of the planet, where the Explorer 10 starship is waiting for him. As thousands of swarming Vita creatures follow in pursuit to the surface, Moaz Divis boards the Explorer 10 vessel, takes control of the helm, and fires two proton torpedoes at the approaching horde of Vita creatures, disintegrating them all completely to ashes. With their queen dead, the rest of her nest will die soon says Moaz Divis. The power converters are partially operating, sir, awaiting your coordinates, the IMC says. Gaddick, take me back to the planet of Gaddick, the planet where all this started, the place where it will all end. Because every member of Clan Divis, the underworld syndicate, the corrupt criminal government and anyone having anything to do with my family's death has breathed air long enough. I will use the force to steer a massive asteroid into the southern hemisphere of their planet, causing chaos and destruction, Moaz Divas angrily says. As the IMC initiates the hyperdrive, the badly damaged Explorer 10 spacecraft 
can be seen climbing high into the atmosphere as it disappears in the sky and leaves the orbit of the planet Krom, on course to the planet Gaddick. Question, sir, if I may be so bold? The IMC asked. What is it? Moaz Deves asked. How do you know the Vita creatures will not survive, sir? The IMC asked. When the creatures kill, they don't ingest their food, but instead bring their poisoned victims back to their queen to be harvested. She digests the victims and secretes a high-protein substance that the rest of the colony consumes for food, for survival. Without her to feed them and lead them, the rest of the creatures will all starve to death in a relatively short period of time, says Moaz Devis. Extraordinary, brilliant strategy, sir. After adjusting this new data, I calculate a 99% probability you have just eradicated the VTOC creatures from the planet of Krom, sir, the IMC says. Only a 99% probability, huh? Well, I just have to do better in the future, Moaz Devis says. Sir, was that a joke? The IMC asks. Why? Was it funny? Moaz Devis asks. I'm not sure, sir. The IMC says. Forget about it. How long until we reach the planet of Gaddick? Moaz Devis asks. In just a few moments, sir, we'll be arriving on the planet of Gaddick. I'd be remiss if I didn't remind you. The spacecraft will break apart upon entry into the planet's atmosphere. I just wanted to say goodbye and good luck. I calculate a 0% chance of you surviving this landing. The IMC says. Not even if I tried a high altitude water landing? Moaz Divas asks the IMC. Brilliant, sir. I didn't calculate that into my data. Recalculating now. Adjusting thrusters for a high-altitude ditch landing. The timing will be crucial, sir, but I calculate a 56% probability of a successful crash-and-burn ditch attempt landing. Upon entry of the northeast hemisphere over the North Organic Ocean, if you eject at the precise time, you could theoretically survive the crash, sir. The IMC says, The Force Willing I want you to send out a repeating message on all channels and frequencies and lock it into a repeating continuous loop. I want everyone on the planet to hear this message, says Moaz Devis. Understood, sir. I am recording now. Go ahead with your message, sir. The IMC says, Your lives as you knew it is over. Run if you want, hide if you can, but nothing will stop me from taking everything from you. My name is Moaz Devis. I was abducted. I was a slave, a murderer, a survivor, a hunter, an exterminator, and a force wielder. And I am the only justice in this lawless galaxy. And I am coming for you. In message, says Moaz Devis. The end. <laughs>